Nothing is as much fun as rebuilding an existing piece of furniture. Cool, let's do this. So in this case, what we're going to do is, well, yeah, we're going to rebuild this console table. With this exercise, we are kind of like simulating the situation where you go to a client. We want to redesign or do some design work for an existing space. And the client has already existing pieces of furniture. Now we need to rebuild actually or honestly not really the complete piece but we want to rebuild something in SketchUp that is proportionally and detail level sufficient to let the client know oh this is actually my piece sweet you modeled it okay <clears throat> you can also see that I simply took a photo and then added dimensions onto every corner. I also took the photo particularly kind of like close from the top down so I can see all the important edges. And I prefer this method compared to taking measurements and then making a hand sketch on paper because, well, it's a photo, I can see the piece and I can just add all the dimensions to it. I find this is a lot easier to document. And then later when we go home, and have to build it, it's just a photo of dimensions. Super easy to understand. We eliminate the problem of maybe misunderstanding our notes or sketch we created. Okay, the image for this is inside the download link. You can download it. Please go ahead and let's go into SketchUp and then model it. So here we are in beautiful SketchUp. First, we will go to model info and we want to set this to decimal and in inches. Cool. Okay. Then let's go ahead, file, import, and then you navigate to where you have that image downloaded. Here I have it. And then we just place it and draw the size. Okay, good. The next step is we want to rotate this image, in my case, along the x axis. Very good. And then I move it a little bit back. I have really no idea yet how big actually this image is, but it's very easy to read the dimensions and I'm going to build the, the upper cabinet block first. And if, if the model is very small or large, then I can adjust the image accordingly. So we can see that this is 14 inches by 34 inches. Okay, good. So, oh yeah, this image is really large. You can see that this is now uh, dimension wise, 87 inches by 17 inches. Uh, anyway, this tells me that I'm drawing the width first and then actually the depth. So 34 inches comma space, 14 inches and enter very good so let's verify is this correct what's this dimension 34 14 very good good this basically now tells us when we select the image we can go to the scale command and just scale this down there and move this a little bit closer cool okay the um, box has a height of 65 uh, sorry, 6.5 inches. Very good. And then we can continue since we are working on it. Here we see this has a mature thickness of 0 0.75. We can do this easily via the offset command. So on the front, um, offset command, I mean, obviously not the follow me command, 0 0.75 inches. Sweet. When this is 14 inches, we want to have um, kind of like a, a back two. So we can actually model this uh, inwards a little bit, but we don't necessarily want to completely cut through. Do we get a readout? So this is 14 inches. Okay. We go simply 13.25. So like in the back, we also have a three quarter inch of a material wall. Very nice, cool. So actually the top part is done. Now we can um, 
triple click, right click and say make group. Now this piece is um, locked. I will continue working on the drawer and the handle simply because um, then I can always nicely see the image right now. So we have here two drawers. There's also a tiny gap. So what we want to do is we can draw actually a face in there like this. Then let's split this there midpoint to midpoint. Very good. And let's see if I can, well, maybe we just do this by hand. We select the edges and delete what we don't need. Very nice. Now this, we will simply also give this 0 0.75 material thickness to the inside. That's good. Okay. So here's a little trick now what we want to do. <laughs> I just wanted to rotate my view around the photo. That doesn't work. We see here there is this gap. So there are multiple ways how we could do this. We could round actually these corners to give an idea of a distance or we could add a little bit of a distance there too. Um, yeah, so how do we do this? This outer box, I will hide right now. Then I can go to the push and pull, select the surface, and then see, well, how much do I want to bring this in? Maybe 0 0.01. And then maybe I do the same here. 0 0.01. And here, 0 0.01. And uh, where is it? And there it is. And there two point zero one. Okay. Let's actually now take a look how this compares to when we have the piece there. Now you see, and there's a tiny gap. And uh, believe it or not, this is really um, something that will show up later. We can, if we compare this to the model, properly increase this. So. Let's do another point one. Point one. And point zero one. Whoops. And then the same here. Point zero one. And also at the bottom. Point zero one. Cool. Very nice. Okay, and then we can do a um, <clears throat> yeah triple click, right click, and say make group. Okay, let's bring this over to the other side. So we'll go to the move command. Go ideally, do we find a midpoint here? That seems to be a midpoint. Oh yeah, midpoint of the group. So Alt click. So I press the Alt button or the key on the keyboard, left mouse button click. Then I drag this one over till there, click. Okay, now you see there's actually a distance in between. So click and then along the um, X axis, zero point. 0 0.02 and enter. Very good. And yeah, <laughs> we have this one. So what happened here? I must have actually moved this too much at the beginning. So you see, now we start actually moving things left and right. So what's actually a more effective way? I deleted everything. I go to redraw everything. One more time, just with a new sketch, because I know we are the modeling, I figured out really what I want. Okay, so this is now the perfect fill. And let's simply do this offset via, well, the offset command, 0 0.02. There we are, very good. And then we can see where is actually here the midpoint. There's the midpoint. There's the other midpoint. 
Thank you, very good. And now this line has to go actually to the left a little bit. Or you're going to hate me. Let's do this one more time. Because I just realized, hey, I can even take it even one step easier. Very good. There. Okay, now this makes more sense. Point zero two. Point zero two. Okay, so left and right. Let me see. Good. Okay, then I can select this fill and this fill and delete it. I have actually the frame left. This I extrude 0.75. This I extrude 0.75. Very nice. Then triple click, right click and group. Triple click, right click and group. I will select my two groups, three groups, right click and hide because we have this framework left and delete it. Okay. Now I could have re um, edited this part so I wouldn't have shown you these struggles in the video. While doing this, I actually made the decision to keep it in the video. <clears throat> so you simply see how also I sometimes have an idea of how to do something and then I realize, oh, there's actually an easier way. And then sometimes instead of just fixing it, it's simply quicker when you're in the stage, just remodel it, restart it. Okay, good. So now we have our two doors. There's something inside, nothing behind, and that's fine. We're not going to pull the drawer out. The last detail here is we have um, four inches width for the handle, and then it comes out kind of like 0.75 and mm, 0.5 maybe is too small. Let's say quarter, quarter inch, it goes down. Okay, good. This one here I will hide for the moment. So it's simply easier to navigate. Where is the midpoint? Is that the midpoint? Yes, so two inches, very good. Thank you. From there, two inches that way, thank you. Then along the Y axis, we set 0.75 inches and go back, snap to that endpoint. There it is, very nice. And, um, and then, what's actually 0.5? Yeah, that's way, 0.5 is way too small. So. As I said, let's make this quarter of an inch. Good. Thank you. So this is nice and paper thin. Not necessarily really ideal. Let's add actually a little bit of geometry to it. Um, let's, let's say 0 0.5. Sorry, 0 0.05. Escape, then we do the same here, 0 0.05. Thank you. Then I bring this over, connect this, suck, suck. And there we have a thickness, cool. I can do the same here too, 0 0.005 and 0 0.005. Then I draw this one along the Z axis up and I, I'm really paying a lot of attention that my lines are blue, red or green. So they're always really following the X, Y, Z axis. And then honestly, it's just color by numbers. Suck, suck, and here, suck, there is actually the piece. So you see how I built this out of a flat surface. This is actually point, Seven five. Let's hide this. This is maybe the only last detail we were going to do. So <clears throat> this face, 0 0.75 we extend. Triple click, right click, group. Very good. Then uh, unhide everything. There we are. Uh, hide the box again. 
Okay, so we see how this overlaps. Now, if you do not have the pro version of SketchUp, you cannot use the solid tools to cut this. Okay, so let's say, oh, we don't have it. How can we cut the space into there? That's easy. So double click. So we go into the edit for this group. You see, it finds actually the intersection. And I draw two lines. And now I can go to the push and pull. And this face, I simply extrude down. And there I created the cavity. Easy. Okay. So let's unhide all. Very good. So how, um, how do we get this to there? Let's make one double check. So 0 0.04. And honestly, the easiest part is this one we delete. We make a copy of these two copy from this corner to that corner so move and alt very good and then we 0 0.04 one more movement very nice cool yeah We want to refine everything a little bit. Uh, I noticed that this is actually 0 0.04. This is 0 0.02. Um, so this phase, simply we move 0 0.01 one time. Let's measure it now. You see? So we removed one unit and then here select the group double click select this face and bring this over 0 0.01 cool okay so now this is actually very even at this point now we can simply move this one up might actually make sense to move the image now to somewhere else maybe to here and then a little bit to the left cool okay good so select everything, go to the move command, and from the ground to there, that is actually 72.5. So I go to the top corner point and I move this one up. Did I say 72? 32, I mean, 32.5 inches. Let's verify we did this correct. Uh, no, it's not. So, um, what happened here? Well, <laughs> um, we basically moved the bottom point 72 up. Wah, wah. No? Okay, but the top height should be at 72, not the bottom. The whole object has a height of 6.5 inches, so we can simply move this one down 6.5 inches. Let's do a measurement. There we are. Okay, good. Goody. Now we can plan on how do we model this. We have one inch at the bottom, two inches on top for the legs, and then the legs are 1.5 inches moved to the inside. It's actually pretty easy to do. So I will go ahead, draw myself here to two the rectangle for the legs let's verify one more time yeah two inches then this we will move one way 1.5 very good and then the other way 1.52 let's verify yep very nice good this now we can simply move down to there. There we are. Cool. And now how do we get this to being um, just one inch? We have to actually, when this is two, each face we need to move in by 
half of an inch or actually each edge we have to move. So you 0.5 and then let's select this face, sorry, edge 0.5, okay. Then what's this now, let's see. Yeah, one inch. On the other direction. Actually, it snaps to it. Very nice. And then this one and there. Cool. Okay. Very nice. Let's take a look actually from the bottom. So what I want to do is, is actually this corner lines up with this corner. So how do we do this? We select the face, then I go to the move command. And hit the well, which key is it I press the right uh, arrow key so I can go left and right and then I move it actually to this corner point there then I click and, and one more time now I press the left arrow key and clicked there and when I zoom out there you see how we rotated the leg pretty cool now yep Triple click, make group, there we are. Now we uh, need to make a copy. So um, how do we do, how do we make the copy? It's maybe, where's the midpoint there? Click, 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 okay. This piece, I move along the x-axis to there. That should actually perfectly snap onto. If I go to the top view, let's turn off the parallel projection. And then here, the Y movement, zack. Okay, ooh, oh, 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 oh. That's actually not good. Let's undo the step. So we saw that this face here got moved incorrectly. We can also go to, uh, where was this again? View edge style, back edges. Yep, back edges there. Now we see actually, they call it back edges here. Other programs call this hidden lines. So this face, you see here, I will go into the top view again. Then I go to move and then this one along the y-axis, I just move and make it flush to there. Thank you. Cool. These two groups we fixed. Then let's make a rotation. Do we find actually here maybe the center point? Yeah, we do. You see how from each edge I drew in the midpoint. There, click. And, but uh, yeah, I want actually this to be the other way. Um, so this doesn't really work. So uh, yeah, this part we need actually to flip. Okay. So I make a copy, maybe move this one to there then right click and say flip along now the question now is which one is it the green or the red one red one mm, no actually it was a green one but it doesn't matter this one actually we need two for the other position you will see so this actually goes to there And there you see how I moved this one in. Very nice. I make a copy of this piece, right click, flip along red. Yes. Um, no. Um, this is not the same one. Flip along green. Yes, this is the one I need. 
and then again top view I move it along x and y and make sure this perfectly fits yeah there we are this now we can delete and this whole thing we put into another group this group let's go to the outliner and we will call this console table so inside this design i can find actually the object console table inside the outliner inside here the outliner and then you see all the other groups which we modeled but when we bring this into another architectural model i don't want to have a big clutter inside my tag system here this is actually then when the outliner becomes in very very handy we can keep the back edge on but let's turn this off we also don't apply materials yet we will do this inside the other file okay awesome this design is done